this tutorial, we'll be showing you an overview of our plugin for 3ds Max and V-Ray Render Engine. Once Render Beamer and the plugin are installed, just open your scene and forward the Render Beamer, then beam it up. Our plugin will check your scene for possible errors, and if there are any, you'll be informed with prompts. Once the checking procedure is done, you'll see the main plugin UI. On top, you can switch the language and tweak the plugin settings. Show confirmation prompt will display the information window after each successful data transfer to Render Beamer. Upload original Max scene for VR scene will allow our plugin to forward the Max file along with the exported VR scene file. Show scene state warning will display an error message when using incorrect setups with scene states. Now, let's close the plugin settings and take a look at the main window. The plugin UI is divided into three sections. Mode selection, cameras with render range, and render settings. First, let's take a look at the mode selection panel. Depending on the scene GI and animation scenario, you can choose between five modes. First on the list, we have render as is. This is the basic mode. It'll just render your scene as is without changing any GI settings or render options. You can just use it for single frame rendering and animations. Second on the list is Full Animation, Bake, and Render. In Full Animation, we'll switch your GI setup to Irradiance Map and Light Cache. Irradiance Map mode will be set to Animation Prepass. Light Cache will be set to Progressive Path Tracking. The Scene GI will be cached to files. Once caching is done, we'll render using pre-cached GI maps. GI cache is calculated for every frame, so render range 0 to 100 will generate 101 VR map files. Full animation mode is suggested for scenes containing many animated objects, materials, or lights. Third and fourth on the list are modes designed for camera animations only. These are Camera Animation and Brute Force Animation. These two modes are designed for scenes where the camera is the only animated object. Here, we also change the GI to Irradiance Map and Light Cache. However, for the caching procedure, it's done with Step Value. By default, we'll cache GI every 10th frame. GI caching can be done using Single Node or Multi Node. Single Node will cache GI using one fast render node. Multi-node will split your render range over multiple render nodes. It's recommended for scenes with a bigger render range. The main difference between camera and brute force animation modes is the usage of the secondary GI engine. For camera animation, we use light cache for GI caching. For brute force animation, it's just brute force, so only the irradiance map is saved in the cache files. Last one on the list is still image render or bacon render. Still image mode is designed for rendering higher resolution single frames. It's our custom distributed rendering technique. Every render node gets one strip to render. You can use GI caching in every possible configuration or just turn GI cache off. However, it's highly recommended to leave the bake switch on when using cacheable GI engines like Irradiance Map and Light Cache. With the bake switch on, Farm will cache GI the files and use it for rendering. If you're not sure which mode is for you, please do a test render and render as is mode. Next, let's take a look at the camera and render range settings. As you can see, we have all the renderable cameras listed here. You can turn the cameras on and off directly in the plugin UI without having to open 3ds Max. Here, you can set the render range for each camera. You can either put a single frame value or animated. You can also set the global render range with the text box and apply to all button. Once the cameras are set, let's move on to the third part of the plugin, Scene Render Settings. The first two rows includes basic setups for the V-Ray render settings. Below, you'll find three switches with output options. Use Frame Buffer, which will turn on the V-Ray frame buffer output. This option should be used with the Use Split Channel switch which saves frames as V-Ray standard frame buffer space separated into RGB channels and an alpha. The next output switch is Use Raw Image. With this switched on, all the outputs for your scene will be saved as one multi-layer EXR file, which will include all render elements and layers. 
The output switches are connected with the output selection drop-down menu. One for the V-Ray image file format and one for the Max image file format. As you can see in the default plugin window, output format selection lists are grayed out. If you want to change it, just select Overwrite Extension and choose your desired format from the list. Keep in mind that choosing the output format from the drop-down menu will switch your current format setup to 3ds Max and V-Ray's default output settings. The next switch is the V-Ray Buffer Gamma Override button. It's basically a gamma setup dedicated for V-Ray. Below the output format switches, you'll find two options for the camera path. Just as with the output format settings, both the irradiance map and light cache camera paths are read from the scene. The last two switches are a new project name, which can be used when rendering multiple projects using the same assets. And send as VR scene, which will export your 3ds Max project to V-Ray standalone and render it with a dedicated standalone version. The last but most important one is the send to form button. Once you click it, your project will be forwarded to Render Beamer and uploaded to the farm with the desired render settings. And that's basically it when it comes to the 3ds Max plugin settings and options. In the next tutorials, you can check additional information about dedicated render modes. Happy rendering with GarageFarm.net!